Is the uh, when was the so you went last year to get rehab because of drugs? yes, uh, because of alcohol. I never went to rehab because of drugs. I quit drugs on my own, mm -hmm. but I went to rehab because of alcohol. So you quit the drugs a few years ago, then? Yes. How'd and then you, when I, how'd you stop doing that? I just quit. Like I had, and I had a, uh, I got a counselor, and she helped me through a lot of things, mm -hmm. and I quit. Cool. So did, so what did you just, what was the, is there any drugs you started with? Um, I guess cocaine. Mm -hmm. Cocaine was the first one. That wasn't marijuana. I mean, I don't really consider marijuana a drug, but. Yeah, tried that for my anxiety marijuana. Yeah, it helps like, some people. And some people, it gives them anxiety. So it all I depends. do it. It just made me more paranoid having it in the house. Yeah. Yeah. It works for some people and for some people it doesn't. Uh, well, it's like, it didn't, didn't feel right having it. Yeah. So I just quit doing it. Tried it once, a couple times, and then I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. It's not for everybody. It, it was like, so did drugs ever, what was the, so you said the, so they ever, so what makes people keep doing them? Um, uh, because of the addictive, the addictiveness to them, mm -hmm. it's like smoking, like people get addicted to smoking. Um, some people get addicted to gambling, some people, and some people get addicted to drugs, right? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to drugs, my opinion is you do them so you don't have, like, even if you don't think about it, you, you do them because you don't, so you don't have to feel, so you don't have to deal with certain things in your life and then hmm. when if and when you do come become sober all those things that you never dealt with when you were like for me all the things that I never dealt with when I was drinking I hmm. then once I became sober I then had to deal with them and they're they're pretty heavy things like I did never dealt with my daughter's death so even though it had been years after it was like I was had to deal with like I had to deal with it Mm -hmm. and I had to go through all the emotions and everything but I had to do that all sober yeah and that's one of the hardest things about being sober and staying sober because that's a huge trigger right like all those feelings and everything and before when I felt those feelings I wanted to drink before if somebody like got on my nerves and I started to get like anxious I would want to drink so I didn't have to feel those things so your brain is a muscle just like the muscles in your arms, kind of, right? So the muscles in your arms, they get conditioned to lifting. You know, you start off with five pounds and then they can do that. 10 pounds, that's what your muscles are used to. Well, your brain, whenever I would get anxious, my brain would say, just drink a beer, right? Because that's what it was used to. So I had to retrain my brain to not think that way. I had to learn how to think a different way. For example, um, if I would make somebody mad before and they would yell at me, I would be like, oh, whatever. I would get upset and I would want to drink a beer. But now when that happens, if I say something to somebody and they get mad at me for it, I stay calm and I don't want to drink a beer because the way I look at things now is that the way they reacted to me, that doesn't speak to my character. That shouldn't upset me so much because that doesn't say anything about me. It says something about them and the way that they're coping with the situation. Mm -hmm. as, long as, as long as I cope properly with the situation then I'm okay with myself and then I'm okay you know then I'm okay yeah so it's not always easy it's something that I've really I've had to learn and I've had to work on it and I'm still working on it I work on it every day yep and most days like um people ask me oh how was your day and 97 percent of the days I have a good day uh -huh. and I and I feel that it's it's it mostly has to do with the way that I see things now and now I have more coping skills and healthy coping skills, right? And then I can have healthy relationships with people. I can have healthy conversations with people. Yeah, it's like be, becoming sober is the best thing that ever happened <laughs> to me. It was, it's nice. Mm -hmm. I actually like can have a life, go out, do things. I have money all the time, right? Whereas before I'd get money and it just all go like it go on beer. Yeah. Not all my money, but a lot of it. After I, you know, would pay my bills, pay my rent and my groceries, the rest was beer. And now, you know, if I see a sweater, I can be like, oh, I'm just going to buy that because I have the money to because I don't spend my money on beer anymore. Mm -hmm. 
So there's a lot more positive things to being sober than there is to drinking or doing drugs. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's, it is, it is hard and it is a struggle every day and because it's there every day. It's a, it's a part of who I am, right? Staying sober is the biggest part of who I am yeah. anymore, right? Because if I don't stay sober, I have nothing, right? My kids wouldn't want anything to do with me. I would have my job, you know, if I went back to what I was doing before, I would mm-hmm. have nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Addiction is a crazy thing. So so do you still hang around the friends that you used to then? No, no. Now I hang out with my nephew. He comes over at least once a week. This oh. week he'll be over twice a week. Um, my is go Max? to my is that Max's uh, Yes, yes. Yep, Albert. So he's my little baby. I love that kid. Um, and I also get to see my my other brother and his girlfriend and his niece. I see them. Oh, he has kids too. Every other week, Dom. Yes, he has one. She's four. Oh, I was thinking. Yeah. Um, I was thinking Matt. Yeah, I don't. They don't um visit at the moment because COVID, right? So they're not. They're still not um like going but- out and stuff like that, just in case. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid going out. That's why I downloaded Zoom for the meetings and stuff. Because I was going to do it as Max before he... Yeah. Like, I only see my two, like, my two brothers, my nephew, and then um my parents, and that's it. Well, and yeah. my kids, obviously. My kids. And I go to work. Yeah, that's the same for me. I just go home and go for a walk. Go I do a walk every day. Is helped me as my anxiety. That's good. Yeah, I like to walk too. I like to walk, especially when the sun is shining. I do it in the winter too because of the. It's good because it's better than riding my bike because I can't ride my bike in the winter. But I got it fixed like last week. Oh, that's good. Yeah, pretty they, soon you'll pretty soon you'll be able to ride it. I like to rollerblade. If I can plan a day, I'm gonna ride it to St. Thomas and back. Oh yeah, how long would that take? Two hours. Oh, nice. That's a nice bike ride. At least there it would. Uh, Make sure it's not on a rainy day. It is. Uh, I'm going to ride to someone that has a vehicle that I can drive him back. Yeah. Hopefully. I can. Because if not, because I'm going to ride to back and forth. Because I like, I rode it to Trails End and back. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's a little bit of a ways. But I'm not going on Highbury to St. Thomas. You're not? No, I'm going to do a back road. There's back roads to St. Thomas from London. Yeah, that, they probably wouldn't be as busy. Because mm-hmm. they're pretty, I think it's illegal to ride on the highway. Yeah, you would probably get pulled over for sure. It is a um, a highway, right? Like Yeah, because um, I know you, I don't know if you can or not, but. I'm not sure. I don't have my license, so I don't know the rules. But yeah, the, so what was the, so did you have anything worse when you were drinking? Um, oh, I, um, the, this, uh, on one New Year's, I went downstairs to do my laundry and I had been drinking and I grabbed the, I grabbed the railing, but it, the wood broke on it and I swung around and I hit my head on the cement and I cracked my skull open. So to this day, I have a hole in my skull and I have some, like it caused, it didn't cause any major damage or anything, but it did cause for me to have to take medication every day to keep the like pressure and stuff. So I don't get headaches because if I don't take that, then I have horrible headaches every day. They're so bad. So, so that was pretty bad. Like, do they give you (laughs) migraines then? Yeah. Well, what it does is, um, where it was hit, my brain pushes on my skull Uh And so it causes a lot of pressure, which feels like my head is being squeezed into a vice. So to a vice? Yeah. So now because of that, I have to be on um, medication for the rest of my life. That sucks. Yeah, it does. So that was on New Year's? Um, yeah, that was New Year's about six years ago. Wow. Yeah. So I've already been dealing with a whole head thing for six years. So it, it's it's under control now. The first two and a half years... Um, just finding the right medication was, it was pretty long, two and a half years. Yeah. And even now with the medication that I'm on, if there's a really sharp, loud noise, all of a sudden it sends like this electricity feeling through the side of my head where I hit it. And it, that hurts, even though it only lasts like maybe three seconds, it hurts a lot. What? Even if you're, even if you take the medication? Yes. Yeah. Wow. That must suck. 
Yeah, it does. But it's, it's not, that doesn't happen too often as long as, you know, like pretty much everybody that I don't really hang out with a whole bunch of people or, you know, I kind of stick to the same people, mostly my family, like I said. And uh, so they all know that like they're all aware of that. So I mean, that's mainly what I've been doing ever since COVID hit. Cause yeah, they, there's, okay. there's not really, I've been just trying to stay safe with COVID. Yeah. Yeah. It's not worth the risk, right? Like if you go out and see people, then you know some some of those people that might be the last time you see them because they could get covid or whatever right it's or best to just wait until you don't know who all the vaccines who has are there or whatever yeah or, exactly i was told at work that this happens every hundred years well it's not every hundred years but it ha- did happen about a hundred years ago there was a plague yeah they i don't know much about it though they said there was a couple like this they said one was the last one was the uh, the flu, like the one flu, and it happened so bad that it was doing it. And then the one was the plague. They said that was the flu was thirty years ago or something like that. They said. Oh, yeah, they didn't shut down the world like this one did, though. No, but they said they were able to handle things a lot better and everybody knew how to deal with it because they knew how to fix it right away yeah because i bet you it's getting boring for a lot of people so it makes it harder for people to deal with the stuff yeah i'm pretty sure by, by now everybody just wants it to be dealt with and over with so we can get back to some kind of normal life yeah like it's hopefully by september or something but we can get back to like 